This video is sponsored by Squarespace. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to balance a vehicle with a combination of gyroscopic stabilization and weight shifting. In another video, I showed how a monorail train could balance itself with a pair of control moment gyros connected to actuators with some sort of tilt feedback, and while it did technically work, I wasn't very happy with that approach. My biggest gripe with control moment gyros or reaction wheels is the fact that they can get saturated, meaning you can only apply the torque for a finite amount of time, so if a disturbance lasts long enough, it'll be physically impossible for those devices to compensate for. For it. On the other hand, if you can shift your weight around, that torque can be applied indefinitely. Weight shifting by itself would be pretty tricky to implement reliably because it's relatively slow acting. Even if you have infinite weight to shift around, the maximum acceleration is limited by gravity. But throw a spinning gyro into the mix and suddenly it becomes way easier. In my previous video, I actively steered the gyros to create the roll torque for my vehicle. But all you really need to do is have a single free tilting gyro hinged on an axis perpendicular to the roll axis axis and it will act as a giant roll damper when it's allowed to tilt freely on a perpendicular axis. A great example of this is a thing called the Sea Keeper, which is literally just a giant flywheel on a gimbal that you can install on a small boat to keep it from rocking back and forth using the flywheel's angular momentum to resist the roll disturbances from the ocean. The caveat here is that the gyro has to be free to pivot on the perpendicular axis, which in this case would be the pitch axis. If it's locked in place, it's not really going to do anything. Here's the monorail train from my previous video with one of the gyro gimbals free to rotate. You can see that while it does want to slowly fall over, the tilt can easily be corrected with the occasional nudge of a finger. Visualizing this on a graph, the angle versus time would look something like this for a regular object as it falls over. The angle starts off at zero, but then exponentially goes up over time until the object is on the ground. With a gyro stuck to the same object, it would look more like this. You get a really slow angular change over time right up until the gyro goes into gimbal lock where it basically becomes totally ineffective and then the object suddenly falls over. But of course in that large window of time before it falls over, you've got lots of opportunities to make a correction, like by shifting your weight. Anyway, I improved that old gyro a bit by changing the flywheel to brass, which is both denser than steel and also a hell of a lot easier to cut and drill. Then I made a new gimbal with a brushless motor on it to spin the flywheel. At 16 volts, it'll be around 8500 RPM. To replicate the effect of the Sea Keeper example on dry land, I made a curved cross section similar to a boat hull which wobbles back and forth when it's disturbed. But when the gyro spins up and I try bumping it again, there's no wobble. Let's try a slightly less stable shape. This narrow one is a lot more wobbly. But again, spin up the gyro and we've got ourselves a very nice roll damper. Let's take this to the most extreme scenario and mount the gyro on an inverted pendulum, which is completely negatively stable. Again, it does eventually fall over with the gyro running, but it's nowhere near as quick, and like with the monorail, some gentle corrective nudging keeps it more or less where it needs to be. Okay, so this is where the weight shifting comes in. Because of the damping effect of the gyro, we've got a long, long window of time to move the CG of the system around, so I should be able to do this remotely with a weight on the end of an arm connected to an RC servo. I took this little servo and solvent welded its horn to a printed ABS arm that has a heavy half-inch bolt on the end of it. For the electronics, I've got a DC to DC buck converter dropping the 16 volts for the motor down to 5 volts which powers an RC receiver and the servo. Oh, and this thing is the motor speed controller. Seems to respond just fine, now let's spin up the gyro and see how it behaves. So the weight shifting seems to have the intended effect, but once the pendulum goes past a couple degrees of tilt, I think the weight shifter runs out of authority to correct the CG. The shifter used a 73 gram weight on a 115 millimeter lever arm with plus or minus 45 degrees of travel from the center, meaning the maximum roll torque it could produce was a measly 0.058 newton meters. The system as a whole weighed 955 grams with a CG 145 millimeters above the pivot point, meaning the torque from gravity would be 1.36 newton 
newton meters multiplied by the sine of the angular tilt from vertical. So if you work out all the math and assume small angles, which makes everything linear, this means after about two and a half degrees of tilt, the shift weight doesn't have enough authority to correct the pendulum. To make this work, I'm gonna need more counterweight and probably a bigger servo to drive it. So I'll just head on down to the junk store to buy some parts. But what's this? My piggy bank is empty, oh no. That can only mean one thing. Let me tell you about a little thing called Squarespace. Do you have a business idea? Well, in 2024, you'll need to use that World Wide Web thing to get anywhere with it, and that means having a website. Whether your business involves selling homemade teddy bears, offering marriage counseling in your garage, performing exorcisms, providing engineering consulting, or you're an artist trying to feature your portfolio, you're going to need a public-facing website to do business. That means finding a reliable host, a lot of coding knowledge, secure payment processing, search engine optimization, some way to track user metrics, and a reasonably professional level of graphic design, unless you want to look like you're stuck in the 90s. Squarespace has all those angles covered, so you can quickly and easily set up your website and impress all your friends by telling them what a cool entrepreneur you are. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and if you want to launch a website, go to squarespace.com slash hyperspacepirate to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, back to gyro stuff. I guess it's time for a bigger weight, so how about this big block of copper I had laying around? This ingot weighs in at 590 grams, so assuming the same arm length and 45 degree limit, that makes the maximum corrective torque 0.47 newton meters, allowing for it to correct a maximum tilt of 20 degrees. I also got this much larger servo to drive it. I think we're cooking with fire now, let's try it out. Don't mind the anvil, that's just a big paperweight to hold down this whole setup because it was getting a bit shaky. Well, sure enough, that was more than enough to keep the pendulum under control through a pretty wide range of motion. I managed to manually keep it under control for a solid 10 minutes without breaking a sweat, so I'm going to go ahead and say that this definitely works. Before I turn this into an automated system with a feedback loop, I'm going to want some way to figure out the tilt angle of the gyro gimbal, so I printed this adapter that connects the gimbal shaft to a potentiometer. With 5 volts in and 0 tilt, the output voltage is centered at 2.5 volts, but as I tilt back and forth, you can see that the voltage goes up and down on my oscillator. Scope. Although when the gyro spins up, the mechanical vibration seems to cause a lot of noise in the output, so I'll have to add this capacitor between the output and ground to smooth it out. Okay, that looks much better. The fuzz is mostly gone. I think that'll be usable for a feedback loop. To serve as a testbed, I built this absolute abomination of a bike. The gyro sits in the middle of the body and has a cover over it that all the electronics sit on top of. I don't think an uglier vehicle has ever been made. Oh, never mind. Well, I guess it doesn't need to look pretty, it's just a test prototype. Okay, so I know the electronics look pretty bad, but the setup is simpler than it looks. It just happens to be really messy because I kind of just threw it all together really quickly. This could all be condensed down into one very simple PCB in a final version. Using a 3 or 4S lithium battery, which is either 12 or 16 volts, a brushless ESC is powered to spin the gyro motor. At the same time, a DC to DC buck converter drops the input voltage to 5 volts DC to power an Arduino, RC receiver, tilt sensor, and two servos, one big one for the weight shifting and a smaller one for steering the front wheel of the bike. The front wheel servo is controlled directly from channel one of the RC receiver and the weight shift servo is controlled entirely by the Arduino. There's also this MOSFET that controls the drive motor on the back wheel of the bike. The Arduino takes in the throttle command from channel three of the RC receiver and generates a usable PWM range for the MOSFET to deliver current to the motor from the 12 or 16 volt output. Obviously this could be done by a brushed ESC controlled directly from the receiver, but I didn't have one on hand, so I just did it like this. It'd work the same either way, as long as you don't need to go in reverse. For connecting the Arduino and MPU6050 to everything else, I made this adapter on a piece of breadboard, which has the socket for the Arduino, the connectors for the servos, receiver channel, and 6050 sensor, and the MOSFET for drive motor control. The majority of the feedback for the control loop comes from the angular position data from the MPU6050 that the servo will move the shift weight in proportion. Portion to. And while this technically can work, I found that angular position feedback by itself wasn't sufficient to maintain stability for long. See, if you get a really big angular disturbance, then obviously the weight is going to shift itself over in proportion to that. But then, as the vehicle starts rotating over to correct itself, it picks up so much momentum that it'll actually swing itself to the opposite extreme and just fall over because it's dealing with the static destabilizing torque plus the momentum that's trying to make it fall over. So, in combination with the angular position data, 
data from the 6050, I also used angular rate data which was provided by the potentiometer connected to the gyro gimbal shaft. Theoretically, this is the same data as the gyro rate data that the 6050 can put out in addition to the accelerometer data, but I think it's a lot cooler to be able to use the analog output directly from a mechanical source. Having these two feedback inputs makes the controller a PD, or proportional derivative controller. In other words, the control loop responds in proportion to a combination of roll error and roll error rate of change. I don't have an I or integral term to make it a full PID loop, which sums up error over time. It didn't really seem necessary for this application. That's all well and good in theory, but it took quite a while for me to tune the gains in the PD loop to get it to actually balance. At one point it looked like it was somewhat stable, but then it would get into really violent oscillations, which I think are caused by using excessive gain plus a lag in the feedback loop. It took a lot of tuning, but eventually it got to a point where it seemed usable. Ironically, it was easier to stay upright with manual control than trying to automate it. I guess my coding sucks. So it balances itself standing still, but what happens when I try to move? The one thing I haven't dealt with yet is side loads from turning. I previously mentioned that the weight shifter has enough authority to compensate for about plus or minus 20 degrees of tilt. Using a little trigonometry, that's equivalent to 0.34 times the weight acting across the moment arm of the CG. In other words, the shifter can handle about one third of a G in a turn before it can't stabilize anymore. So if we're moving forward at three miles per hour, which is 1.3 meters per second, the minimum turn radius is gonna come out to 0.54 meters or 1.76 feet. So yeah, we're not exactly gonna be pulling off any aggressive turns with this thing, but if I take it slow, I should be able to keep it balanced while I drive it around. Now I just realized I never found a place to put the battery. Hmm. How about just adding it to the shift weight? Hey, I never said this was going to be pretty. All right, let's try driving. It worked pretty well in straight lines, but the feedback loop had a bit of a tough time with turning, even if I was going pretty slow. I suppose it didn't help that the front wheel was so wobbly. It also broke off after a few minutes of driving around since I printed the shaft vertical. So the concept definitely works, but it's pretty rough around the edges. I think if I spent a few days improving the software for the PD loop, it'd actually work really well, but I was mostly just set on proving the concept is viable, even if the test bed was a little ugly. Yeah, I definitely gotta work on that wheel traction, though. Oh, and there goes the front wheel again. Okay, so in summary, weight shifting with a passive roll damper gyro is absolutely a viable way to balance an unstable object, but it's extremely important to keep in mind that for weight shifting, the maximum angular acceleration is limited by gravity. Therefore, I'd say the best approach would probably be to actively drive the roll damper gyro for the bulk of the angular corrections and then just have the shift weight act as trim ballast to avoid getting into gimbal lock from a long duration disturbance. Or you could just, you know, add a third wheel to the vehicle, but that's super lame and boring and gyroscopes are way more fun. Okay, bye.